Hi, I'm Ashley from Sunny Maid, and today we are going to discuss how to maintain our sewing machine. Welcome back. I know it's been a couple weeks. Sorry about that. Um, I'm super excited to be back and to be starting some new things with you guys. First of all, a little housekeeping. Let's name some winners. So um, I've got several people that commented on our giveaway video and um, lots of good ideas of what you wanted to learn how to do. There's some of the stuff that um, I am familiar with. And so I will work those items into some videos. There are some things that I haven't done a lot of, so I might have to try it out a little bit before I could do a video on it. And that's just um, me probably with personal preference and things I like to do. And maybe things I might be a little intimidated about. So there just may be some topics that you guys left in the comments section that I might need to um, try out myself before I do a video on it. Okay, so I was giving away two different things. The quilt I was gonna ship to someone in the United States, and then I was going to send a PDF copy of the Brightly pattern to someone outside of the United States. So our winner of the quilt is Joanne Adams 4868. Congratulations. And our winner of the pattern is Karen M3774. I'm going to leave my email address down in the description of this video. And if you guys will email me, tell me, um, I'm going to need address and um for the karen one i'm i'm just gonna need an email so just contact me through email and we'll chat and i'll be able to get those um prices over to you guys hopefully i will get them out soon okay so what are we gonna do now i have been really trying and toying with the idea of what i wanted to do from here after we went through all the different techniques of building blocks and putting together. And I think what I'm going to just do is do a series of tutorials, um, more informational, and maybe possibly dive a little deeper into different topics. So for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to go over our sewing machine. I had a couple of people ask about stitch length and thread and so I'm going to kind of go over the sewing machine, some tips and tricks that I use when I'm putting my quilt together, some tools that I might use. So that is today. Next week, we're going to talk about other tools that I feel are essential and, and also tools that make things a little nicer and how to take care of them and keep them up to date so we don't have to replace them. All that often so that's what's coming up the next two weeks I was gonna do a third one but I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do then a um, couple more weeks down the road we are gonna tackle another quilt so stick around if you want to sew another quilt together it's super fun you'll need a layer cake but we'll get to that when it's time to do that quilt okay let's get started Okay, this is the machine that I use. It is a brand called Janome. I have used several different ones. My favorite one that I had or that I got originally was a Faf, and I lost it somewhere in moving. So um, I now have a Janome. I've had a brother in the past, and I actually have another Janome that's sitting over on the floor in the box that my mom gave me, and I haven't gotten around 
to using it. So it's just sitting in the box. But this is my Janome. Pretty much when you're doing quilting, you really just need something that does a straight stitch. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be computerized. So my on button is over here on the side. Um, it's important to know how your machine works, how to adjust the tension, how to thread the machine, and how to change the foot on the machine. Um, so let's start with thread. I usually use a cone. Thread comes in one of is one of those things where it comes in better quality and um, not as good quality. This one I think I bought at Hobby Lobby. And even though it's a big cone and allows me to use it for a long time, it does gum up my machine. It's very linty and I get lint up under here and I get lit down in my feed dogs, which means I have to clean it a lot faster. Um, this is one that I bought at my local quilt store. It's Glide and it actually has a nice sheen to it. And this is really nice thread. It's not going to um, lint or do anything else. This is a number 40 um, polyester thread. And that's actually a really good basic thread. So if I were to buy thread from a quilt store, this is probably what I would buy. Um, right now, I didn't know any better, and so I'm just going to use this up and um, deal with the lint, extra lint that I have. If I have a cone like this, generally you would put it up here on this part of the machine so it's sticking up. This one is just too big. I probably could put it on there, um, but I don't. So I stick it right here in front. I do do a little swirl around um, the thread around this so that it gets a little more tension. If you're dealing with a regular um, thing of thread, it goes, it'll go up here. So it just depends on how your machine is set up and what type of thread you are using. My um, next tip for when you are sewing, I, especially when you're doing a whole quilt and you're planning to do it from start to finish, I actually like to make bobbins, like a whole bunch of bobbins at one time. That way, every time that I um, run out of bobbin, I don't have to unthread my machine. So I use a lot of white. I just like white because it's easy, especially if I have a white background, I'll just use white. So I will do eight to 10 bobbins um, when and get them all ready so that when I run out of bobbin, I don't have to run bobbin every single time. When it comes to needles, we want to be replacing them after each quilt top. Um, it, a quilt top will dull. As we sew it, it dulls the needle, and we so we want to replace it regularly so that it has a nice, clean cut through the fabric. Um, what a, a needle actually does is you have the fibers, and it's actually moving the fibers out of the way. It's not actually cutting the fibers. So we want to it to be able to be nice and sharp so that it'll go between the fibers and not cut them. When it comes to size and style, I just use a universal. These ones had two different sizes, an 80-12 or a 90-14. Um, either of those is fine. You just need a universal, universal um, needle. Now, since I did just finish that quilt, I will go ahead and um, replace my needle. What you do is you take, I have one of these. This is my screwdriver that goes into here. It goes into my screws right here. It has a couple different sizes. Um, once I loosen it, I can then pull down on my needle and I'm just gonna toss this into my trash, pull out my next one. There is a front, sometimes a front and back to these. 
So just pay attention if there's an indention, it needs to go. Oh, so one side is flat up on the top up here that you slide into your machine. So that's how you know if it's how it goes. So mine has the flat piece in the back. So that's how I'm going to slide it in. I then tighten it, first fingers, and then I'll come back with my little screwdriver and tighten it. And now I have a brand new needle that is all ready to go. Um, let's talk about feet. I use a couple of different feet when I sew. So this one is, I have two different quarter inch feet. This one, the quarter inch goes from the middle to this side. And I'll use that when I'm making flying geese or half square triangles. This quarter inch goes from the hole in the middle to this edge right here. And I use this foot when I'm sewing pieces together and putting blocks together. And I just have to put it right next to that edge. I don't push it too far over because it'll bunch up and then it'll be more than a quarter inch. But I sew my fabric right along that edge and it gives me a perfect quarter inch. So these two are super helpful. Other than that, just make sure that you know um, where a quarter inch on your machine. I do have um, measurements here on my machine if I was sewing, if I needed to watch that. The only other foot that I might use, this is a stitch in the ditch foot. It has an edge right here. And what I would do is put that edge right through the ditch where I want it to go. I would adjust my needle so that it is um, flowing right where I want it to go. And so this would come in helpful when you do something like binding. Now, one of the things you need to know how to do is adjust your needle. You can go left to right and you can do a different stitch length. When I turn my machine on, it gives me a 3.5, that's the position of my needle, and 2.2, that is my stitch length. I usually just sew in a 2.2, and that is actually um, millimeters, 2.2 millimeters as I'm sewing along. But if I have thick fabric, I might do a three, or if I'm doing something like binding or even machine quilting, I might go up to a four. So just make sure that you know how to adjust it. Mine's super easy. And if you just want to reset it to what it does um, when you turn it on, you can just turn it back off and back on and it'll get it all back to normal for you. Um, one other tip when it comes to the needle. Another way for you to know that you need to replace your needle is when it starts to skip stitches. So say it's going along and you have one here, it goes here, but it doesn't keep, and you go in the next one, but that middle one is not there. That's when it's called skipping stitches. So that's another indicator that you need to um, replace your needle. Now, the last thing I wanted to go over with you is cleaning your machine. It's very important that you keep your machine clean because it allows you to quilt and to quilt smoothly and properly. Um, when your feed dogs here, it's the part that pushes your fabric through the foot. When, um, when it's not working properly, that probably means that you need to clean your machine. So I got this when I, um, with my machine and in it was this cool little device. It's like a toothpick on one end and a brush on the other. There's also tweezers in case I need to get stuff out of hard to reach places. I would use this. Actually, I already took my screws out, but take the screws out, take the top off of your bobbin. I was trying to figure out where I put the top of my bobbin. Can't find it. Um, and then after you take the screws out, you might need to pull your foot up a little bit. Take the foot off. That makes it a lot easier. 
but you can take this plate out. And at this point, you would use it to brush or to use the toothpick end to pull stuff out. You can also, if your machine does this, pull out this. This is the carrier for the, um, the bobbin. So the more you can pull out and the more you can clean around, the better it's going to run. A rule of thumb also is to clean this between each quilt. Um, or you can just wait until your feed dogs start working. But you probably don't want to do that because then your quilts are going to come out super um, kind of puckery sometimes. So I just clean this out. This is all from my um, thread. See how how linty it gets it gets stuck in the feed dog so i would use the pointy end here to use to clear it out of the feed dogs and use the brush to get in back in the hard to reach places the other thing that you need to worry about depending on your machine is is it going to need oil a lot of the machines that are made these days don't require oil but once again, that depends on your machine and how it's supposed to be made or how you're supposed to maintain it. So make sure you read your owner's manual um, so you can know if you need to oil your machine. I bet you can find a YouTube video on how to oil your machine. Um, you can also find, I would suspect, specific videos on how to clean your machine if you search for your machine specifically like mine's a Janome 2030 QDC I bet if I put that in the search bar of YouTube you'll be able to find how to clean my Janome machine so either check with your owner look at your owner's manual or check YouTube I bet you can figure out how to, to clean your machine as well as if you need to oil it to oil it all right do you have any questions please just leave them in the comment section below and i will come back and answer them if you want to see some of the items i talked about today i do put a few links that go over to amazon in the description box so i will you know um like the foot, the feet that I use on my sewing machine, those type of things, I do have a link to go over to the ones that I use. So if you're interested, go check out the description. Okay, let's do a little show and tell. I finished up my same sky quilt. This quilt pattern is by Modernly Morgan. And I love the way it turned out. The fabric is Bonnie and Camille. I believe it's called Sunday Stroll. I think. So I got some um, backing fabric ordered and it's going to be my next quilt. I'm going to long arm. So I'm super excited about that. Also, on my long arm today or my long arm this past week, I'm learning how to free motion on the long arm. Up until, this, up until recently, I've only done edge-to-edge -to -edge pantographs. And so I'm kind of super excited with the things I'm learning and how my patterns are coming out. So this one I did this week. This is a quilt along, sew along that I did with sugar, sugary do, S-U-G-A-R-I-D-O-O. -O. Go find her on her YouTube channel. Um, it was a skill builder quilt. So um, I learned how to do foundation paper piecing. There's several of those um, curves, so I thought that was super fun. Let me show you the. It's a it's kind of a rainbow quilt, and just some basic piecing. I really enjoyed the foundation pa paper piecing on this, so I hope to do some um, video of that in the future. And I did a really cool paisley. I've been watching videos on YouTube to see different types of free motion quilting and how I could apply them to my quilts. I'm trying to go off of 
what did I do last time and maybe mix it up just a little bit but enough that it creates a cool new pattern so that's what I did this week I need to bind it um, back of the quilt I am not starting a new quilt soon <laughs> I was talking to my friend the other day and I have a whole pile of quilts that still that need binding so in fact there's 12 of them I think this one might make 13 so that's what I'm going to be working on the next couple weeks and hopefully I can get them done and then I'm going to get them in a shop to sell I haven't figured out how to do that best yet so when I'm putting some quilts up for sale I will let you guys know in case you guys are interested in purchasing them other than that I hope you have a great week happy sewing <music>